Welcome back. Our next video deals with standard costing and variance analysis. You do remember that standard costs are um, costs that assist us during the budgeting and the planning process before an activity commences so that we can compare actual costs with the uh, budgeted ones. You do remember that uh, in terms of variances, we can have favorable and adverse variances. Favorable is obviously something that's good for us. Adverse is something that's not good. It depends, remember, what are you analyzing, either prices or uh, costs or materials or sales. Um, it depends on which side you are. There is a full example in your notes, in the express notes for you, based on a cost card. This is something we have in the budget. Um, and then we have a budgeted production and sales and actual results that you would compare with the cost card and the budget. And then you do a series of calculations done in a systematic way, for example, for material variances, that's the same also for sales, just you will interpret the results in a different way. You will have materials used, this price variance, you always use the actual quantity of the materials when you are discussing prices, and the materials that did cost that amount is given to you, that was $9, you can read that this is an adverse variance because we actually paid more for our materials than we should have. And going on like this, we can see that you do also materials usage variance. Uh, that's, that's depending on the standard cost, but in this situation, you will compare the, uh, the units. So 1,000 units should have used 5 kilos each, that's 5,000 kilos, but for 1,000 units that you produced, you used 4,900. So there is a favorable variance of 100 kilos, measured at the standard price of $9, that's 900 favorable variance. So the total material variance in this case is a 25 adverse variance because of the 925 that was adverse. Labor variance goes in the same way. Quantity, but that's the efficiency this time. It takes the hours into consideration that we should have worked and the rate variance, that's the cost. How much hours did we work at what was the standard cost and how much hours did we work multiplied by the hourly rate paid or the total amount given to you in the question paid for the labor and efficiency goes on the same. Note here that labor variance can be influenced by learning curve uh, effect. Overheads are pretty much the same because they, when they go on in uh, at, at F5 level, they are assumed to change according to labor hours. So we assume that over variable overheads are absorbed into the production based on the labor hours. And that means that we will use sorry we will use the efficiency variance the labor hours that we need to produce the units fixed overhead variances note that they are computed on uh, two sides on expenditure and uh, volume variance if there is if you are using marginal costing then you will only compute the total expenditure variance and that's it if you are using uh, however, absorption costing, then you can do the uh, expenditure variance and the volume variance also. They are used on the same basis as um, variable overheads. Sales volume variance is pretty simple, as very similar to the material usage. We have a volume analysis and a price analysis. Volume is just the budgeted sales volume compared to the actual sales volume multiplied with the standard margin. Remember, this is not the price. When, when you are dealing with the volume in terms of sales, then you are multiplying the standard margin. And sales price variance at using the actual quantities multiplied by the uh, budgeted price and the actual revenues that we, act we, what we incurred. An operating statement is just a reconciliation of the budgeted profit in case of absorption costing with the actual profit. So you start with the budgeted profit and reconcile with all the variances that you've calculated and arrive to the actual profit. Remember that if you use marginal costing, you'll start with the budgeted contribution and you'll end up with the uh, actual. Also, please remember that if you are using a marginal costing, you will only recognize fixed overhead expenditure variance. Yeah? No efficiency because you are not absorbing fixed overheads into marginal costing. In terms of mix and yield variances, um, you probably know that, that um, this can be used when you are combining more than one materials in the production process. 
It examines mixed variants, examines the monetary impact of altering the proportion of the two materials. If the budget says, let's say, 60 to 40, if you use 50 to 50, what will be the impact in terms of um, money, in terms of costs? Because, for example, if this material is more expensive, this one is just expensive, let's say so, uh, then using less of the more expensive material, we'll have a favorable variance because we use obviously more in the less expensive one, but that will get us some uh, decrease of losses. Yield variance focuses on the total amount of inputs that is required for the output achieved. The sum of these two variances will end up to be the total materials usage variance. So it will be just the same as the total material usage variance we computed in the previous example. Again, you have an example that is uh, solved out for you here. You know that you need 5 kilos of material X and 10 kilos of material Y to produce one unit. If for 12, 12 units you use 50 and 145, you can calculate the mix and the yield variance. Just you can see immediately that in terms of mix, in order to produce the 12 units, you should have used 60 kilos of X and 120 of Y. Yep, 60 and 120. Right? And that's just the, bit, the difference between the two will generate you the uh, mix and yield variance, mix variance, sorry. Yes, the mix and yield variance in total, but you will break that down into mix variance and yield variances. Right? In terms of the mix, then you'll take into account the standard mix of, uh, the standard mix in this situation will be 5 to 10. Right? So it will be, uh, that will be the standard mix. And what you'll use, what you use, the actual mix was 50 and 145. And then they will have um, favorable and adverse variance. And note that the difference, that some of those differences will be always zero. The yield variance is computed in a similar way. Now that this time you will use the, you use the calculation on the uh, basis of the standard mix. In terms of uh, pl oh, sorry, <coughs> planning and operational variances, this is something that we calculate because there can be differences between the uh, uh, budgeted amount and what actually came out due to other circumstances like, for example, market changes. This means that our mar standards become outdated and we need to alter it. And we want to know what, in terms of variances, what is attributable to the management and what is not attributable. Planning variances are comparing the revised standard to the initial standard, and this is considered to be out of the control of the management, while as operational variances compare the actual to the revised budgets, and this is within the control of the management. And actually, just, this is just a lying back or driving back to controllable or uncontrollable factors, which is the underlying assumption of responsibility accounting. So what's in the uh, responsibility of the management, that is operational variance, what is outside the responsibility of management, that is planning variance. For example, if the market size itself changes, that's something that is impact planning variance. Whereas the market share of the company, that will be an operational variance because that's something that we can influence. Standard costing cannot be applied in certain scenarios. For example, if our products are non-standard, so we're producing lots of different products, if we are designing um, bespoke kitchen, for example, furniture for a client, then all of the kitchens will be different. We cannot make up a standard. How much time do we need to build up a kitchen? Again, if standards are changing rapidly due to the environment or market developments, again, we cannot use standard costing very reliably because variance analysis will lead to some figures that cannot be actually interpreted properly. Or if we have a manufacturing process with a high level of automation and let, let little labor input, again, standard costing may not be very, very useful. In our next video, we'll deal with the last section of our syllabus, performance measurement and control. See you there.